Hey everybody, I'm Evan. And I'm Grayson. And here we are back at this series where we are looking at the top three, three games, games for every single letter of the alphabet. I know this has been taking a while to get through this. I think we've said this on the past couple of episodes, but uh, uh, you know, it is what it is. We'll, we'll get there eventually. Yeah. <laughs> so this week we're looking at which letter again? The T's. Yeah, the, the the games that start with T. The terrific T's. There there are some terrific T games. Um, I think this was a pretty easy list to make. Yeah. What do you think? Um, there's some definitely some standouts in the in the letter T. Yeah. Um, funny thing though, when I made this list originally two years ago, my number one game isn't even on the list right now. It's fallen off completely. If out of the top. If I were to have made one um it probably <laughs> wouldn't have yeah so i'll mention it at the end because it maybe it's still on your list it's probably not but you never know all right mm. do you want to get started yep okay so who wants to go first you all right so my number three is probably going to be on your list but it is the tales of the arabian nights that's my number three yeah okay Okay, so Tales of the Arabian Nights is a game, <laughs> but it's more of an experience, right? Yes. Where you play as, like, the Arabian Nights characters, traveling around the map, getting into weird stories. Really weird <laughs> ones. And there's a big, thick book full of strange, like, random stories. <laughs> so, really random. Um, so you have, like, a uh, you have like a goal to hit for, like, the, the two different points points the story and what's the other one the uh the we forgot prestige or something like that like the, the, the fame yeah whatever it is there's two <laughs> there's two different point thresholds which you get points throughout the game but just also randomly because you never know really when you're gonna get it yeah um and then sometimes you get negatives too and then you just basically just traveling around experiencing stories in different locations uh, on this huge map that's just like full of numbers. Which can sometimes lead to other ones, sometimes <laughs> it doesn't. So sometimes you run into a beggar and you uh, fight the beggar, do you rob the beggar, or do you like uh, give money to the beggar? Who knows what's going to happen. And then you try and rob the beggar and he randomly turns into a demon. <laughs> so, so you just never know what's going to happen. Yeah. And sometimes you run into the fire and there's one rule with this game. What is that? Always drink the fire. Drink the fire. Because that's an option that the game gives you. And every once in a while, you actually drink the fire. <laughs> yes. <laughs> that has happened. So it, this is... I, I do enjoy this game. It's, it's, it can take a while to play. But it's fun to like hear the stories. And yeah. hear just the weird wackiness that happens while you're playing. Um, it's kind of hard to control. Because like, I don't think I've ever actually won that game. Sometimes, I, yeah. uh, sometimes I'm stuck in jail for like... <laughs> like half the game <laughs> which is annoying but but i mean you still get jail uh, experiences so no matter what you're still getting things yeah jail experiences that's fantastic <laughs> so yeah so i don't know nothing else left to say about that uh my number three is tales of the arabian nights what do you got grayson my number three is takaido interesting which is a great game where it's like it's basically a method where what happens is that the person that is in front of goes last and the person is back who is the person who go, takes a turn true so the, what's the, the theme the theme of the game is you're walking f yes. you're across japan from one one area to the other and you're having a journey so you can also go there's a variant where you go back back we only ever do that if you're playing with low player counts yes which we don't often do mm, i think no. i don't even know if i'd do that with three players at this point i don't think i've ever done no that. we've done it with three before but we, we don't don't normally do that. We just normally walk across the board. Yeah. Um, so basically what you're doing is you're walking across Japan collecting pictures. Pa well, you're, you're painting, you're painting pic the pictures. Painting yeah, pictures. Um, betting. <laughs> gambling, gambling. Yeah, that is true. Getting money and also eating at restaurants. Yes, but you're also like meeting people along the way. Yeah. And you're stopping at the hot springs. Yes. I think it's supposed to be like a vacation. Like you're just doing a... Like a like a uh, trip, you know what I mean? Yeah, and just like a trying vacation to, trip. Trying to just do different experiences. And you get points for basically um, how much how how good of a time you had. Basically, because there's also like uh, uh, items too that you're you're collecting yes. items that you're getting sets uh, and like of. shops yep. and the, and like you get the points for like mm -hmm. having the paintings. 
Yep, and this game comes with a soundtrack. It's supposed to be like a really relaxing type game. Yes. It usually is. Mm -hmm. um, we have the collector's edition, which has like everything, all the yes. expansions and like uh, the... Uh, the promos? The miniatures. Yeah, there's probably promos in there. Um, yeah. And, so there's a ton of different characters with like yeah. abilities. Some, some of the abilities I think are better than other ones. Yeah. Um, but what do you like about that game? Um, I like it, be, it because of how like it... Of how, like, it, it's mechanism where it's, like, the last to first kind of thing. Yeah, okay, so the active player turn is the person who's in, in behind in the line. M meaning yeah. that the person in last can do more things. But it also gives you the choice, too, if you want to skip ahead or if you want to stay behind. Right, because a lot of the spots have limited number of people can be on them, so... If... Or you just can't even do the spot because you don't, like... You can't go to the shop because you got no money. <laughs> That's true, too. Or gambling because you got no money. But I was just thinking if there's a spot that you want to go to, you can jump ahead to it and then effectively close it off for other people. But in some cases. it does get rid of some of the options for you late, yeah. like earlier. Yeah, so that's an interesting decision mm -hmm. to make, but uh, overall pretty just relaxing. And if you don't yeah. do that well, eh, you still collected some stuff and went to the hot springs a couple times. Mm -hmm. <laughs> All right, so that's your number three, right? Mm -hmm. All right, so my number two... It's a game that I might get rid of. <laughs> because there's a deluxe version coming out soon. Uh, and that's Teotihuacan. Uh. Um, so yeah, so there's uh, Teotihuacan is based on... Uh, it's, 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 it's in Mexico, I believe, where there's, they're build, you're building a pyramid. Mm -hmm. And it uses the mechanism of dice uh, movement. Not necessarily placement, but they're, they're moving around in a circle... Basically, uh, collecting resources to uh, build the pyramid, but yes. also what? I was just also going to note that actually Mexico has the largest pyramids in the world, <laughs> which you don't normally think of when you think of pyramids, right? You, you mostly think of Egypt. You do. Uh, that's a fun fact, there, Grayson. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. So it's a it's definitely a strategic game. Um, we I've played it a few times at two, and I, I think it goes too quickly at two. So I think maybe at the max player count, four is the best. Because even at two players, like all the different dice colors are on there. I think I've only ever played it at three. At three? No, you've played it. Oh, maybe. Hmm. Well, anyway, like because there's it's a four it's a four player game. I think at its heart because there's four different colored dice, and even mm -hmm. if you don't play four players, the other the other colors are still on the board. Yeah. They get randomly moved around because you have to pay more uh, cocoa for the amount of dice that are already on yes. the spot. To, to go to the spot. So yeah. it, so sometimes the spot you want to go to... Is blocked. It's not blocked, but suddenly it's real expensive. Yeah. <laughs> so, um... It's, it's practically blocked. <laughs> well, it depends on how much cocoa you have. And of course, at the end of the round, you actually have to feed your dice people. Because the people have the dice. And, and then they, um... Uh... <laughs> what? They, then they what? Some of them die. Yeah, so like, so as you're using the dice workers, they the, you you turn it up to the next highest number. Yeah, you, you tick it up. Yeah, and then once they hit six, they they die. However, yeah. when they die, it's good because yeah, then it's a good you thing. yeah. So like you raise the track. Uh, like there's another point track that has like a multiplier on it. So what? like that gets better mm -hmm. every time someone dies. And they just get another another younger worker. Uh, I guess their their ancestor, their their son, I would say, son or daughter, join the uh, join the pyramid work uh, building business. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, probably badly explained that, but whatever. It's a really fun game, and it's a really uh, it's a really good looking game. And like I said, there's a new version coming out that is going to be a big box with all the expansions. We have two of the expansions, and we've I don't think you've ever played played with them. And also, there's you can modularly set up the board, and usually we don't even need to do that. Because like you can rearrange the the locations of the spaces, but uh, you don't even need to do that to have a good time with yeah with yeah that's my number two, Teotihuacan. <laughs> my number two is Tales of Arabian Nights. Okay, I knew so, it was gonna be on there. Yeah, it's such a great experience to play through some weird wacky stuff. Yes, and there's not much more I can say about it be because we all explained it before. Mm -hmm. But it, it is just a great experience to have some weird wacky stuff happening yes. to you. And the and the and after like fifteen years, the sequel's coming out, which is which we're pretty excited for too. Yeah, which is Tales of the Arthurian Knights, in like the Camelot type. After like super duper long. Yeah, but uh, yeah, that that's a great game. So mm -hmm. I knew that was gonna be on your list. <laughs> All right, so now we up to number one already. Yep. My number one is the Taco Bell Party Pack. 
No, it's not. <laughs> All right, just kidding. <laughs> um, I just wanted to see your reaction on that. No, that game's terrible. Um, yeah. My number one is Targi. 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 Yeah, I think Targi might be the best two-player only game ever. Okay. <laughs> you don't agree? All right, that's okay. Because Targi is a game where you're basically just uh, like trading for points. You're like, you're going around. Okay, so there's like a grid of cards in the middle of the table, right? And you're going around the outside of those grids. So when you place your worker down, you get, you'll get you get what's on the card. And then you place them on the other, uh, like on the edge of the other side of the grid. And you'll get where the, like where they intersect. So it's an interesting puzzle to figure out. I need this item and I need this item. And then where they meet in a, an imaginary line there, I also get that item. Mm -hmm. um, or be able to do that power or whatever it is. So the idea is you're just trying to collect uh, different cards, like a like a like three different rows of cards, either all of the same type or, or all, all different. different. And they'll score points. And then the, the cards that you pick up, the, the tribe cards is what they're called, you also uh, will have powers or different scoring abilities on them. Yeah. Um, and yeah, I don't know. I really like this game. I think it's really fun. Have You have played it, right? Yes. Well, at least once. Um, maybe, well, maybe only once. I think I played it twice. Really? Okay, well, yeah, it's it's a fantastic game. Or at least I know why I helped you out once. You helped me out? I don't yeah. need help. I don't need your help. Mommy always beats you, though. <laughs> All right, but I can beat Corey. <laughs> but you can't win against Mom. Okay, but that that's that goes for most games, though. That, okay, that's fair. <laughs> okay, so yeah, that's my number one Targi. Again, like a two-player-only game. It might be the best two-player-only game. My number one is Three Sisters. Uh, really? Okay. See, I, I thought about putting that on the list, but I thought it was a little too new. The other games... I'm surprised that you didn't. It was it was in the running, but just because maybe it was newer in the other games, we've played more, like, over I, the years. I get it, yes. But, I mean, I mean I've mean, i played... I probably, I'm probably pretty sure I've played the Three Sisters more than uh, I've played Torgy. Yeah, maybe. Okay, so yeah, what, what's so Three Sisters? Three about? Sisters is a crop growing game mm -hmm. where you're growing beans, corn, and pumpkins, mm -hmm. which is so what? Ha it's a it's a roll and write basically. Yes, with two sheets. Yes, where what happens is that a bunch of dice are rolled, mm -hmm. and then they're placed uh, on a on the board. Mm -hmm. So that what happens is that so when you pick up the die, it. Whatever it's facing is where you have to plant, plant or water. Yep. You plant two or water all. Mm -hmm. But it has to be in that zone. There's right. six zones. Which is the number on the die, right? It. But also, when you complete some pumpkins, you get the flowers. The flowers give you it's extra the bonuses. The flowers are like in between the pumpkins. Yes. Yeah. They give you extra bonuses. Most likely, most likely, um, some of them are on the nor the sheet. The normal sheet, or some of them are on like the warehouse slash apiary slash orchard sheet. Yes, right. Yeah, you got it. Which basically um, are where all the bonus points are. In, in the weird stuff, yeah. Yes. So what happens is that also when you pick up the die at the end of the turn, there's one thing under it, like say like orchard or apiary, where and what happens, what you do with that is you, is you then... Uh, can mark spaces off. Right. It's like shed time or also farmer's market. Right. You're getting like essentially two actions with each die yes. you, you draft. But afterwards, at the end of the round, there is one last die left or two, I think. Um, I think it depends on player count maybe. Yes. But it's the lowest numbered die yes. everybody gets to do. And also the, the action on the bottom. Right. It's basically another action. Right. But at the end of the end of the round, what happens is that there's a final bonus <laughs> action at yeah. the at, at, on the round track, mm -hmm. like farmers market rain, which r waters everything, mm -hmm. all zones, mm -hmm. which is the best. Mm -hmm. And there's one, there's only there's like three, I think, and like almost always you plan it out so that like. The rain just like completes like a bajillion things. Right, that's the idea. So like it, uh, you you mentioned bonus actions, and this game's all about bonus actions. Yes. <laughs> so sometimes because you can fill yeah. up your where your shed, which gets you tons of different abilities. Right, you get the uh, the goods too, which mm -hmm. you tick those up, and, and that which also gives you, more you bonus in the actions. Farmers market too. 
Uh, right, yeah. Uh, Which the, the farmer's right. market can get you flowers or like and bonus actions. Yeah, this game is a bonus action. And then you got game. the compost, which can can help you change it. Or if you got the sh- shovel, you can give you more <laughs> bonus actions. Yeah, so sometimes you end up on on one turn getting like. On the bonus la- action. Oh, and then here's another bonus so action. So basically on the <laughs> last round, you're going to get like, you're going to do like a bajillion different things. Assuming you planned right, I guess. Yeah, if you didn't, if you're not doing a bajillion different things, you didn't plan right. <laughs> yeah, I suppose that's true. Um, so what do you like about that game? Is it, is it the bonus actions? I like how it's, I like a, I like it that it's a good, it's probably my favorite role on, right? Really? Okay. Yeah. But um, I like how it's, how it's so combo-y and you just plan it out and then like at the end it finishes really well. Yeah, right. And then suddenly, yeah, like... Uh, you have like a ton of points. Watering a couple things turns into like watering everything and unlocking a bunch of stuff in the shed. And, and then the flowers yeah, and, and, then, and, then, uh, and then like a bu- and bunch of And then my apples and my peaches grew. And, and, then, and, and then also like some apiary stuff happened. Yeah, the, but the, I mean the, the apiary in the orchard really has to choose one. Um, yeah, you can't really do both to the maximum. Anyway, yeah, you can I, do a little I've bit of them. I've done the apiary. I've just done the uh, orchard. Maybe next time you should try the apiary. Uh, there's a lot going on in that. Yeah, apiary. there's there's a, a there's like a ton of different ways to play. <laughs> yeah, and it's uh, it's a lot of fun. Mm-hmm. I agree. It's a it's a fantastic, uh, like more in depth roll and write. So, anyways, what was your old number one? <laughs> My old number one was Tokaido. Ah. And for whatever reason, I think maybe in the last two years we haven't played it quite as much. I still really enjoy the game. Th- that's why I. That's why it's only number three. Yeah, that's fine. I get it. And that's actually probably why uh, Tales of Arabian Nights isn't number one. Because you haven't played it as much, but that's also a game that takes a while. A while to play, so you just can't sit down and play that every time, every yeah. day. You know, um, it's more like an event type game. Yeah. Um, but Taco Bell Party Pack didn't make your list. <laughs> <laughs> Why would it? I don't know. I thought that was funny because I was looking at the list and I saw it in there. Look, I even, I even wrote it down. Taco Bell party pack. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, I guess that wraps up this episode with our top three games. Let's start with the letter T. Um, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed watching our silliness <laughs> as we slowly make our way through the alphabet. Um, so what letter is next? Do you know? You. Yeah. So how do you feel about you? How many games do we have to do? Uh, maybe not so many, but maybe more than you think. I guess you're going to have to tune in next time to find out. Okay. <laughs> Bye, everybody. Bye. Is this good? Because it's this or that. I don't know. What the heck?